heart that hurts I want to spend my life Mending broken people I want to spend Welcome to another 3ABN Today program. I'm Jill Morricone, and we are so glad that you have taken time from your day to join us here at 3ABN. I love the Today program because we get to feature ministries. We get to feature people whose lives have been changed by the Lord Jesus Christ. And today is no exception. Before I introduce our guest, who is no guest, she is family, part of the 3ABN family. But before I introduce her, just want to thank you at home for your love and your prayers and financial support of the ministry of 3ABN. Because of you, we can do programs like we're going to do today, which is really raising awareness about a topic that sometimes is misunderstood even by Christians or Seventh-day Adventist Christians or people in any denomination. So I am so excited about this topic and about the journey that we're gonna hear today from our special guest, who's none other than Dr. Yvonne Lewis Shelton, my sis. Yes, I'm so glad my you're sis. here. Oh, thank you. So good to be here. And I know you're always here, so it's, it's a little strange for me to be sitting here hosting you sitting I know. there. Well, I know we do programs together, but you are the founder and consultant for 3ABN Dare to Dream, and you did an incredible job with, and are doing an incredible job with Dare to Dream. Praise the Lord. It's been my privilege to be a part of this ministry, 3ABN Dare to Dream. Uh, what? What an amazing way to have come here and what an amazing journey and what an amazing privilege to be working here in the last days of Earth's history, mm -hmm. getting the gospel out to the world and bringing the truth yeah. to the world. It's such, you know, it's counteracting the counterfeit. Yes. And that's what we're here yes. to do. Amen. So today we're going to get just a little bit of Yvonne's journey. Mm -hmm. But not only that, we're, her journey specifically regarding traditional Chinese medicine and the dangers of acupuncture. So before we really jump in, I know we're going to go to a song and all that, but before we jump in, why did you want to do this program? What made you want to even address this topic? You know, Jill, there are so many people. I get calls all the time about, and emails about, should I go see an acupuncturist or I've been seeing an acupuncturist, is that wrong? And I feel like God allowed me to have the journey that I had so that I could explain why we should stay away from acupuncture. And that's what we're gonna be talking about. It, it's my desire to really share the dangers of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine without, you know, I have some wonderful friends that, um, that I practiced with and that were in school with me and, um, and, and patients too. And I, I feel like I really have to get this word out to them as well as to people who would go and see an acupuncturist, mm. that they're really experimenting with something dangerous. Mm, absolutely, and you can share where I could just say, well, I read about it and I heard yes. it's dangerous, but you share from personal experience yes. and that makes a big difference. Well, I'm excited to hear more of your journey Thank because you. I've heard some of it, but I haven't even heard all of it. So <laughs> I'm excited to hear more and to share that with you at home and the dangers, as you said, of acupuncture. But yes. before we do that, a friend of the ministry, Kendall Backus, we met him a few years ago, at least I did, um, when we went to London and he's an incredible pianist and he will be ministering a song, Divine Redeemer.
Amen. Thank you so much, Kendall. We are so grateful that the Lord is our Redeemer. Amen. If you're just joining us, our special guest and family member today <laughs> is Dr. Yvonne Lewis Shelton, my sister. Yeah. And we're going to talk today about your journey mm -hmm. and then about the dangers of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. So take us back. Why were you first interested in traditional Chinese medicine? Wow. Well, I'll take you back even further to Okay, so today I'm going to be really transparent because Good. I think that there are several people who deal with the same issues and they can be helped by my testimony. Absolutely. So I'm going to take you back to my, my 20s. And in my 20s, well, first of all, I've always been a student. So, you know, like I've always liked to learn new things and all that. And in my 20s, I was very much into reading horoscopes uh -huh. and not thinking that... There was, I wasn't doing it for my future so much as just seeing what's going to happen today or this month or whatever. And it and and so I, I began to read them and then um, and then to find out like what sign people were and and then was that sign compatible with my sign? Just things like that that seem harmless. Mm -hmm. But the the whole thing about. Um, one thing about Satan is that he won't bombard you with things all at once. He'll just kind of gradually take you into things. And then before you know it, you're in you're like, yeah, or you've gone so far away from shore, the, the safety and security of the Lord. You've just kind of drifted. And so horoscopes um, were, um, so I was, it was like a curiosity. It was a curiosity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> but, but, you know, you just kind of seem interested in that. And graphology, handwriting analysis, I was interested in that. Um, and different things that just, you know, just seemed like they were okay, but they really weren't. <clears throat> One of the things that happened to me when I was uh, singing commercials, as I was singing commercials for a living, well, before I even started, I remember my manager at the time, I was in a, a group and we had a manager and he had a recording studio. And one night some people came to his recording studio and one of the guests was a Wiccan. Oh wow. And I had never met anybody that was on the dark side like that before. And I was talking to him and he was, you know, very friendly and, you know, seemed like didn't seem like a weirdo. Nothing seemed creepy. No, no. Which is interesting too, but nothing seemed creepy. And he said, so what do you want? He said, what, mm. what do you want? Um, and I said, I want to be rich. And he said, I'll pray for that for you. Oh, wow. Now, if I had been in my right mind, and it makes me just feel so sad that I disappointed God like this, but if I had been like, in, in a spiritual frame yeah. of mind, I would have said, no, no, no. I, I wouldn't have even had the conversation with him. But because I was in that place of slowly drifting, yeah. I entertained that. So I said, okay. And I just let it go. I didn't even think anything more about that. But that was another experience with the dark side. Yeah. And then... Um, there was another time when once I had gotten into the music business, I did make a lot of money, not because he, not because he prayed to Satan, <laughs> but I did. Right. But um, there was also a lot that went with that. But I, I remember singing at a session and um, I got called to do this session for a psychic. Oh, wow. And the psychic um, would do readings for people, but I knew there was no way I was gonna do that. I was like just, palm readings? Well, just, she could just look at you and talk to you. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> so at the end of the session, the producer, who's a female friend of mine, she said, oh, the psychic wants to say something to you. So I'm thinking she wants to thank me mm -hmm. for, you know, singing on her session and everything. Well, she said to me, I'm gonna tell you something. And she began to read me, oh, wow. give me a reading while standing there. And she would look to the side and she would say, okay, 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 thank you. 
and look back at me. Like she's talking to like someone. Like she's up. talking. Off to her She son. was communicating with a demon or to her, a spirit guide. Mm -hmm. And she's communicating and then coming back to me and telling me things. And instead of me saying, whoa. Mm -hmm. Get away like, from me, Get Satan. away from me. Right. Or instead of me removing myself, I was so beguiled by it. Mm -hmm. I was so, I, it was like Eve at the tree, I guess. You know, mm -hmm. standing there and hearing things about myself that how could she have known? Well, she didn't know. The demon knew. Mm -hmm. So that was another, you know, all of these are these little, little forays into yeah. the dark side. Mm -hmm. So I remember uh, leaving that session and getting into a cab and feeling so sad, knowing I had let God down. Because even though I wasn't in the church at that point, mm -hmm. There, you know that there's certain lines you just don't cross. Right. I just, there, I knew that there were certain lines that I would never cross. And I crossed that line that day to me by allowing her to talk to me, to have the spirit guide or demon tell me something. Did you feel scared or just oh, sad no. about it? Like you would let God down? Oh, sad. Yeah. No, not scared. Okay. Uh, there wasn't any fear about that. The, 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 I, I was so hurt that I had hurt oh, God. Yeah. And I knew that even though I was away from, I, I always considered myself still, which is so delusional, but I considered myself <laughs> Adventist while I was out there singing. Cause I was, right. you know, even though I wasn't really going to church, I still, there's certain things I just did not do. And so I still considered myself Adventist and the people in the music business considered me to be very spiritual, right. but people who were Adventists knew that I had, you know, gone to the left and I had people praying for me and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, then one other thing that happened, and there's a reason I'm doing this, I'm kind of taking you through this to see, to show how Satan can just kind of pull you yeah. slowly but surely yes. into consenting to do things that you would not have ordinarily consented that is true. to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, I remember I had a friend who was an engineer and his mom was also a psychic and she did astral projection and pendulum divination. So one time I said um, to him, would you ask your mother you know, he, well, he volunteered it, my bad. He volunteered it. He said, I, my mom, because I was going through something at the time, and he said, well, my mom does pendulum reading. I could ask her for you. And oh. I said, yeah, okay, ask her. And, you know, he told me, and he told me what she said. So essentially, I had, through him, contacted someone, again, who was doing divination. Satan has had the plan for me all along mm -hmm. to move into divination. Mm. And um, so fast forward to 1985 when um, the Lord began to work on my heart. And uh, um, everybody, I've told this story before about uh, Pastor C.A. and coming, going to church because my grandmother told me they're yeah. going to have a new pastor and I went to the church. And from then on, I was going to church every Sabbath and um, studying the Bible and all that. So that part of mm -hmm. my life, I thought, was behind me and I was a new creature. And it wasn't that I was seeking this regularly, right. but just the fact that I did it at all to me. It's just, it just hurts my heart even now to talk about it. So You know what's beautiful? I was mm -hmm. just thinking about your story as you were talking, that you were raised to know Jesus. Yes. You had a praying family. Yes. And that even though you were walking maybe not in all the paths that you had been taught when you were a kid, that God had his hand over you. Yes. And even if you walked into some of this divination or some of this, you know, having people do that, but God still had his hand and God brought you back. What a merciful oh, Savior. You know? What an amazing God Amen. we serve. Amen. Because even when we, you know, I am grateful for my praying family and I am grateful for the seed yes. that was planted right. in me. Because I knew there were times that, I, mean, I knew better. And I knew, I know now 
that God had his hand on me the That's whole right. time, yeah. the whole time. And I'm so grateful. So yeah, yeah thank you for that. So uh, it's just, it's so amazing how God, he just, one of my friends, a pastor friend of mine said, God's like a giant fisherman. He lets you kind of go out, you know, but then he reels you back in. And so I'm yes. just so thankful that he will. Amen, amen. So in 85, I came back to yep. the Lord. And, um, and I was singing jingles at the time and doing studio uh, music and uh, studio singing. And a jingle singer's lifespan, career span is, you know, not that wide because they start wanting new faces, new sounds and all that. So I, um, as there, there was, a, there were times when I wasn't really working mm -hmm. and, but I had things on the air, so I was still making money, but it's still, you know, I was not working as much. So I began to, being the perennial student that I am, um, <laughs> I began to investigate other things. And I, I, I sang at a camp meeting once and this lady just walked up to me and gave me a tape and a booklet. Mm. And she said, I just feel impressed to give you this. So I said, thank you. And you know how people give you stuff, oh, yeah. you know. And so I said, thank you. And I put it in a drawer and I didn't even look at it for months. And then one day, I took the tape out and I popped it in. Mm -hmm. And it was a tape about sugar and its harmful effects mm. on the body. And I, I was just like, it was like, like I was so intrigued. Like drawn in. Drawn yeah. into it. I was so intrigued by the information that I began to study alternative medicine. Yeah. And I began to look at um, herbs and I had friends at church that were really into that and they kind of took me under their wings and then I began to get these different certifications and so I studied iridology, I studied reflexology, massage therapy, auricular therapy uh, and then one day, oh and naturopathic medicine and then one day someone said you should come to my school, we're having an open house, and it was the Dallas College of Oriental Medicine. Mm. They said, you should come to my school and just check it out. And I said, okay. Now, was not? that traditional Chinese medicine? It was traditional okay. Chinese medicine. Okay. It was the Dallas College of Oriental Medicine. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I, I really wanted an academic experience mm -hmm. instead of just taking a seminar here and a seminar there and getting a certification here and a certification there. I actually wanted to, I would be able to become board certified. Yes in this get discipline a degree in it. and mm -hmm. get the degree. Mm -hmm. So I figured, okay, well, let me go and see if it's okay because by now I was back in the church, felt like I was walking with the Lord, even though in retrospect, some of the things I was doing were considered new age. I didn't, I wasn't right. thinking that. Mm -hmm. And so I went and I remember asking the facilitator for the open house, I, be, I, I remember asking him, um, is this, connected to Eastern religion in any way? Is acupuncture connected to Eastern religion? And, and he assured me that it wasn't really, that there are aspects of Taoism um, involved, but not really. So I thought, okay. So I started going to school there. And I started taking classes. If we can back up just a moment, sure. what is traditional Chinese medicine? Someone might be saying, what is that? Oh. So what does that mean? It, it is, it is the whole medical model that has emerged out of Taoism. It is not just a standalone medical model. It has as its foundation Eastern religion, okay. Eastern philosophy. And um, so it's not just a little bit here and a little bit there. No, it's really rooted in Taoism. Um, and so that's TCM, mm -hmm. traditional Chinese medicine. So I'll be referring to TCM as we talk. But so. It's a holistic approach, you could say, to medicine, but it has its roots or its base in correct. Taoism, in and the Eastern religion. In Eastern religion. Okay. And the primary modalities in TCM mm -hmm. are acupuncture, mm -hmm. herbs, uh, moxibustion, which is a heat, the application of heat. So you like hydrotherapy, you, not hydrotherapy. No, like you would put um, the acupuncturist would put the needle in and have just a little heat cone on it and light it. And it honestly, it's very the smell is very, very potent. It's like, Ooh. whoa, but it's 
warming. Okay. And the whole I idea is to dispel cold. Um, so, yeah, so TCM, the primary modalities are acupuncture, herbs, uh, moxibustion, cupping, those are some of the, the things that you do with TCM. Um, so I went to the classes and I began, at, at first, everything seemed okay. It didn't seem like there was anything that was, you know, questionable really. But then in one of my classes, in the theory of acupuncture class, we learned about the five shen and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, but I wanna go back to yin and yang. Okay. Because the foundation really, and I think we have a graphic we can put up of the yin and yang mm -hmm. symbol. So when you look at this graphic, you'll see that the black and white are first of all in a circle. Mm -hmm. And that circle indicates the unity of the opposites. They call it a harmony of opposites because mm. the whole idea is to balance Mm -hmm. the opposites and these opposites where you see you see black and white um, they're not static they're dynamic so mm -hmm. one is always changing into the other you'll see there that there's the black seed so to speak in mm -hmm. the white and the white seed in the black that means that there is yin and yang and yang in yin oh. the yang is white and there's the black so there's yin in the yang interesting and the black with the white is the yin with the yang and each is transforming into the other so day transforms into night it's mm -hmm. it's a it's not a static relationship it's actually an interdependent dynamic mm -hmm. relationship so one of the things about and, and yin and yang um, that's one of the basic tenets of TCM, of traditional Chinese medicine. Everything, according to TCM, can be looked at through the lens of yin and yang. Mm -hmm. So yin and yang must always be in balance to have health. So they're kind of polar opposites, but yet they balance each other somehow and Correct. they're part of an entire whole? Correct. Okay. That's okay. exactly right. Okay. They're, they're opposites, just like day and night, just mm -hmm. like hot and cold. Yeah but they are to balance each other out. So when you have a preponderance of yang, mm -hmm. yang is hot, yang is heat. So you're going to have, uh, from a medical standpoint, uh, too much Inflammation. heat. Inflammation? Inflammation, okay. too much heat in the body. Mm -hmm. So you have to bring up the yin. You have to balance that with cold. If you have too much yin, you're cold. Mm -hmm. So you have to, that's why the moxibustion is there to to um, bring, the bring up the yang, right. Uh -huh. So okay. it's all about balance. Mm -hmm. But now let's look at that from a spiritual place. Yes. How do you balance good with evil? <laughs> you don't. You don't. The Bible says what fellowship has good with evil, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And 1 John 1, 5, let's look at that. What does 1 John 1, 5 say? Would you read it for us, mm -hmm. First John 1 John 1.5, this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. That's right. Yeah. God is light. Yes. He is perfect. He is sinless. There is no darkness in him at all. We're not supposed to balance good and evil. We're supposed to eschew or That's avoid. Right. Flee. Flee <laughs> evil. Right? So this is where you first run into um, a conflict between what's taught mm -hmm. in TCM and what the foundation of TCM is and also in Christianity. Yep. Good and evil. So as I mentioned, um, yin and yang mm -hmm. came from Taoism. And Taoism, with Taoism, there's no supreme being there's no creator of the universe. Mm -hmm. With Taoism, the Tao is an impersonal force that just is present in everything. Oh, wow. But not an intimate being, not a creator God. Now, there are deities that people worship, Taoists worship, but again, there is no creator, the Tao is this force that created according to Taoism. So again, 
you know, we look at the difference here mm -hmm. in the underpinning of TCM mm -hmm. versus Christianity. Mm -hmm. And there is a total denial of the Creator God. So when you were going to school and traditional Chinese medicine, you were taking these classes, did you know that the underpinning was Taoism? Did they teach that or was it not even readily apparent? It, for me, it wasn't readily apparent and they were not teaching that. And I think, because there were other Christians in my school mm -hmm. as well. And some, even some of the, um, the um, professors were Christian oh, as wow. well. Okay. Um, they were Asian Christians. and. No, they didn't, but there were red flags okay. that I really should have picked up on that I just kind of brushed aside. Again, I guess because, I, probably because I wanted to. You know what I mean? You right. just, you just like, okay, well, this doesn't conform to my worldview. I'm a Christian, so I don't really don't need that to do this. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I went with it. Um, like there was this class that I took called Jinshin. And with Jinshin, you just kind of put your hands under the, the patient and you just kind of sit there. Oh. And, and the patient gets some kind of release. There's no acupuncture in this part. This is just a, a modality. So I was reading the, the intro to the book, to the manual for the, the class, the, the textbook, and I saw that the, the person who wrote the book was influenced by a spirit guide. Oh, wow. And so I, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was just horrified. Yeah. So I went to the, um, the president of the school and I said, this is written by a, a spirit guide? Mm. And he said, let, let me look into that because one of the professors there had written the textbook. So he said, no, no, that's not really, really true. And instead of me really getting yes. into it more, again, brush, okay, brush under the rug. <sighs> yeah. And so that was a red flag. And the other red flag was, um, was when I um, was learning about the five shin. Okay. Yeah, you referenced that before. Yes, and the five shin. And the five shin are, okay, let me back up for a second. So with TCM, again, they didn't tell us that numerology played a big role mm. in traditional Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. The number five particularly has mystic value. Mm -hmm. So there's five they're the five shin and the five elements and the five yin organs. And so five is an important number okay. in mysticism in traditional Chinese medicine. Well, <laughs> I was in my theory of acupuncture class and they began to talk about the five shin. Mm -hmm. These are five spirits oh, that are really? associated with the five yin organs. And so I said, five spirits, like this is spiritualism. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. what in the world is this? And then again, well, because in, in treating people with acupuncture, I didn't think about the hun and the po and the corporeal, the, the je and the yi and the, I didn't think about those. The five the shen. Five you're, shen. Not, you're not thinking about that. No, you're just thinking about you know, okay, so I'm gonna put this needle here and it's gonna do this. You're not really, I didn't really think mm -hmm. about it and think it through. Mm -hmm. um, Almost as if you're not thinking about the theory behind it. You're exactly. just saying, I'm doing the practice. So I'm involved in helping this patient and I want to do something for them and not thinking about all the underpinning or the theory behind why this is doing what it's doing. That's exactly right, Jill. I was, caught up in being able to help people. I loved oh, yeah. to see them feel better. You have a heart they, for well, people. Well, you really so do. Well. You know, just wanting, and I can see that, you know, wanting to help people. So then you think, oh, this is something that's gonna help people because does acupuncture get results? Should I be asking you this Absolutely okay. it does. Okay. Absolutely, and in fact, one of my friends said, I said, 
but he was trying to tell me that you know there was a problem with acupuncture and I said but it works mm -hmm. and he said oh I don't doubt that it works but what's the power behind mm -hmm. it and after he asked me that my friend Schubert Palmer Yolanda's oh, husband yeah. um, after he asked me that question I I realized wow like mm -hmm. maybe there is maybe I need to be really looking into this and seeing am I being deceived Mm -hmm. You know, because I would have people, I would have patients that I would treat, Jill, they would come in with stress, and there's a point here on the wrist, and I would needle this point and some other points uh, as part of a protocol that would relieve stress. Mm -hmm. But I would talk to them after the treatment, and they would say things to me like, oh, I felt energy moving, or I saw colors while I was on your really? table. And I'm thinking, oh, that's just energy. No, duh. Yeah. That's not just energy. <laughs> that's some kind of spiritualistic right. experience. Right. And this point, by the way, is the Shen Men. Mm -hmm. And Shen Men means spirit gate. Oh, wow. What's a gate? Absolutely. An opening to allow. Exactly. The spirit entrance. Exactly. Entrance a and spirit. exit. Okay. You can go out or come oh, wow. in. Spirits can go out and come in. It's just, yeah. This is deep. I want to just pause for one moment because yes. we have a very special offer for you at home. This little booklet, which is not very long, but it's powerful and packed full of wonderful information. Dr. Yvonne Lewis Shelton wrote this. What is wrong with acupuncture? So we want to make this available to you if you give us a call, our call center during non-Sabbath hours, um, or you can contact us, give us a call at 618-627-4651. Or you can always email us at mail at 3abn.org. That's M-A-I-L dot 3abn at 3abn.org. Um, so give us a call or email us and we will send you this little booklet free because we want you to be informed. We don't want you to, maybe you're listening to the program right now and saying, but I still have some further questions. So this little booklet will give you a lot of those answers. So. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, we will no, give no, that no. information at the end again, but Thank we want to make that available to our viewers. Thank you. Because this is really vitally important. It really is because we don't realize what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. We're thinking that it's on, on one level. Yes. And it's really so much deeper than we're really thinking. Mm -hmm. For example, besides the TCM being uh, rooted in in um, Taoism, it's also got astrology oh, as wow. a, a part of it. And I, I have um, um, a chart that I made, um, actually Ricky Carter, shout out to Ricky Carter, thank you, uh, made this <laughs> we chart. Love we love Ricky. <laughs> um, a, a chart that shows the um, Taoism at the top and then yin and yang. And so let's take a look yes. at this, yeah. Okay, so I can see Taoism at the top. Yes, mm -hmm. Taoism and then yin and yang really emerged from Taoism. Okay. One of the Taoist practices is divination. And the I Ching, which is... Um, again, what is I Ching? The I Ching is a... It's this, called the Book of Changes. It's okay. a book. Is it 64 hexagrams? Yes. And what it is is... With the I Ching, this book, it's based on yin and yang and the potential combinations of yin and yang. The yang is symbolized by an unbroken line okay. and yin broken lines. And then there are all these combinations mm -hmm. of the broken and the unbroken and the, the practitioner. Now, this is not all acupuncturists don't do this, but this is part of the underpinning yes. of TCM. So they have these bamboo sticks, they throw them out, and they see how they fall, like tea leaves or oh, reading. Yeah. That, it's fortune telling. Wow. It's divination. That's part of the that whole paradigm. Can we go back to the the um, chart? I, I want to look at that. So, so then again, we have the numerology that um, is a part of the yin-yang thing, okay. the five elements, the five shin. 
And then we have, again, the spiritism with the five shen, the five different spirits that mm. are associated with the five yin organs. Wow. And your yin organs are your heart, your liver, your kidneys, the spleen, and the lungs. So those with are yin, the hot or cold? Cold. Okay, all right. So, and you have six yang organs. Okay. And so um, this, this chart kind of shows the divination, the mm. astrology, the numerology, and the spiritism that is connected with, um, with the TCM. The five shen, for example, let's look at that. Um, the five shen, the first one is the shen of the mind, and that's located in the heart. Mm. And that's the, sh that's the kind of, there's a kind of hierarchical, um, relationship with the five Shen. Mm -hmm. So the heart is the emperor of all the rest of the Shen and uh, of the uh, Shen, and they are like ministers. So oh, wow. the five, the heart is the emperor. So he's over. He's like the boss. The boss. Yeah, okay. And that's awareness. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's awareness. And then the second one is. Um, but if I can stop you a second, yeah, we would sure. say, I'm just thinking in the Christian life, we would say that the will or the mind is to govern the body. So yes. there's parallels there. And that's, we would say that. That's what's so interesting about this is that there are aspects of it that kind of go along with right. our worldview. Because you could almost say, oh, well, I would subscribe to that. Right, except wow. it's a spirit. Yeah. That's the thing that's that makes it. It is. And that's the thing that makes you go, Okay, yeah. it's a spirit. Okay. So the next one would be um, the willpower. Okay. And that spirit is in the kidneys. Mm. And now each of these, again, on that chart, can we show that chart one more time? Because each of these five shen, you see the five elements there? They correspond with the five elements. Oh, and okay, so, so the fire goes with the mind. Exactly. Right? And the water goes with the willpower. With the okay. kidneys, okay, right? The kidneys. With the with okay. willpower and the kidneys. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the earth uh, goes with Saturn. Now look at the, look at these elements. They all have a planet mm. connected to them. Oh, that's So neat. when they use uh, the five element theory, mm -hmm. they are actually looking at the planets and oh, their wow. positions. And five element theory is used to diagnose and treat with really? acupuncture and TCM. Oh, wow. Okay. So you can see how it's all mm -hmm. mixed up in there. Again, the, the, the yi is the thought and that's connected to the spleen. That's okay. intellect and discernment. And then you have the hun and the po. And the po is a corporeal soul and that's that's what gives you the capacity to sense and feel things. Oh, okay. Um, but that dissolves at death, and the Hun is the spirit that enters the body shortly after birth, and then when you die, it remains conscious, but it just kind of goes out into the atmosphere. Some sort of belief in life after death that yes. we would not subscribe to. Exactly. Okay. So it's spiritualism. Absolutely. But it's again with the planets and the, so, so wow. the idea with the acupuncture is that the body's vital energy or chi, which is the QI that you see sometimes it's pronounced chi, yeah. it circulates through the body through 12 primary meridians or channels. But this is based on actually an episteme, which is a, a set of fundamental beliefs mm -hmm that's based in astrology, that the sun in its celestial sphere circulates in a certain pattern. So there's a, a, a belief um, that says, as above, so below. As in the heavens, so in the microcosm or the body. Yeah. So the macrocosm is the heavens mm -hmm. and our bodies are the microcosms. So we've got the 12 uh, meridians, mm -hmm. 12 pathways through which the body's energy mm -hmm. flows, those correspond with the 12 houses of the Chinese zodiac. Oh, really? And so, you again, you can see... It's all interconnected. It's all interconnected. Wow. 
Wow. And I, now that's something I did not know. Okay. The astrological, so they no, no. But I noticed that I had a, a professor who would um, do people's charts for them, like their astrological mm -hmm. charts, and I never connected it. Or when you see uh, on this chart where you see like the, the five elements of, of fire, water, wood, and metal and um, earth. When you see those five elements, they all have a planet connected mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. So again, horoscopes, earth signs, water mm. signs, fire signs, yep. never metal. made the connection. Mm -hmm. Never made the connection. Oh. So all of that, it's all, it's all part of Satan's plan to deceive and to get us into astrology and all of that without even knowing that we're doing it. So what if someone's watching right now, Yvonne, and they're saying, okay, I've been having acupuncture done on me and it's really helping me. Mm -hmm. And when I go, I don't allow my mind to go into those Eastern mystical things. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing anything to do with that. Right. I, I'm just going to, to help my physical pain. Right. Um, and are they involved in the spiritualism by, yes. by going? By going, because you're putting yourself, would you go into enemy territory? If you're in a battle, would you go into en enemy mm. territory? Never. You are placing yourself in an environment that allows yeah. demonic activity. And you might, you don't even realize it. And, and I want to ask you something. If you're going to an acupuncturist right now and you've been going for a while, or if you are an acupuncturist and you think you're a, you're a Christian and you're not, trying to practice Eastern medicine, right. you're just trying to help people. How's your appetite for the Bible? Mm. How's your appetite for spiritual things? Do you notice that it's kind of diminishing? It's kind of waning? Are you really just into doing things that, that can make a difference? Or, um, you know, you have to ask yourself certain questions about how it's impacting mm -hmm. your spirituality because it can really impact it without you realizing it. So it's important, because I know when I was practicing acupuncture, I wasn't, my, my spiritual appetite wasn't as profound as it should have been, as intense as it should have been. And I loved, frankly, I loved being able to touch someone and their pain could go away, because mm -hmm. I know where to touch mm -hmm. to take your headache away. And that was like, wow, I mean, I, it, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's Yo, like a, yeah. a power, Absolutely. it's like a thrill that you can do this, knowing things that other people don't know. Oh yeah. But you're putting yourself on enemy territory mm. and that's the danger. So what led you to make the decision I'm no longer going to practice acupuncture. I'm no longer going to do this. Because you question. had these red flags, it's a great but question. yet you're still practicing. So, but today you're not practicing. No, so, so no, no, no. What no. led you to make that decision? You know, Jill, that's a great question because the Lord was, was trying to get me out of it, um, sending me these indicators, and I really wasn't listening, but here's what happened. So 3ABN had invited me to... Uh, sing at a function in New York. Ruben Carr, who was oh, yeah. working with 3ABN yeah. at the time. And I didn't know you guys here. Uh, I knew CA and Ruben. But anyway, Ruben invited me. So I went to New York and I was going to stay with my friend Yolanda. Mm -hmm. We were sharing a room, Yolanda Palmer. And I'll make this quick. And so long story short, I had my needles with me and a friend of ours came to visit mm -hmm. and she said she had a headache and I said, oh, I'll give you a little treatment because I was an acupuncturist right. at the time. And so Yolanda said, no, 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 no. Don't do that in here. That's from the devil. And I was like, what? And right. my pride welled up and all that. And so long story short, I, from that experience, Yolanda and I, I mean, and I love her. She's like my sister and we fell out for a bit and, um, but she sent me a book mm. and it was called Spiritualistic Deceptions in Health and Healing by Dr. Edwin Noyes. Okay. 
And I read that, or at first when she sent it, I looked through it and I said, ah, it's written by some Western doctor, a hater. He doesn't know about Eastern medicine, I put it away. <laughs> <laughs> and I just kept practicing. <laughs> but there was something making me think like, am I being deceived? Right. Am I being deceived? I better check this out. Mm -hmm. So then, I don't know, just, I, I came back to 3ABN to interview about a book I had written. Mm -hmm. and, um, and this lady saw me and she looked up my website and she saw that I did acupuncture yeah. and she sent me a packet and in that packet was a picture of the same book that Yolanda had oh, sent wow. me. And so I said, Lord, are you trying to tell yeah. me something? I looked, I looked back in that drawer, I found that book <laughs> and this time I read the book with Amen. an open heart. And the Lord convicted me and then I went online and I read this book astrology with, I mean, uh, an internet report, astrology with needles. Yes. And that did it for me. Mm -hmm. Everything clicked and I was like, oh, I went to prayer meeting that night. And this couple was at prayer meeting and I was so broken because I yeah. knew that I had been practicing something that was displeasing to God. And, um, and they, they prayed for me and they, they were there to comfort me, the Campbells. And, um, I'm just so grateful because the Lord showed me and from yeah. then on I have never used another needle. That was 95% of my income. Wow. Never practiced again. I wish we had more time. What I an amazing know. journey the Praise Lord the has Lord. led you on. And as a result of that, you're using your gifts to be able to share the dangers yes. of something that you were once involved in. I want to give um, this free offer one more time if you are interested in this book, What's Wrong with Acupuncture, written by Dr. Yvonne Lewis Shelton. We will send you this book for free. Just give us a call at 3EBN 618-627-4651 and we would love to send this out to you because I know Yvonne has a heart for people and she earnestly wants to uh, raise awareness so that you at home will not be caught in the same deception. What we want to do right now is to put up the contact information here at 3ABN. If you would like to contact Dr. Yvonne or you would like more information, here is how you can do just that. If you're interested in getting more information about this topic and want to learn how to be better informed regarding the dangers and risks of these alternative forms of medicine, you can contact Dr. Yvonne Lewis Shelton at 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. Again, Dr. Yvonne Lewis Shelton, 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. You can call 618-627-4651. That's 618-627-4651. Or go to our website at 3abn.tv. Welcome back. We've been talking today about the dangers of TCM, traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture. And thank you, Yvonne, for being here. Oh, and do you have a closing thought for us? I do, I do. I want to share a couple of scriptures. Um, when you have a chance, look up Leviticus 19.26 that says, do not practice divination or sorcery. And the actual word in Hebrew for astrology is divining the heavens. So it's divination, astrology is divination, and we're not to deal with that. And also Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 13. Read that when you mm. have a chance because it's very important. There's a, an article that I'm just going to share the last paragraph with you of this article that I found on the Internet that really, really convicted me. And it mm. says, in sum, there are 361 acupuncture points. Um, the same as the number of degrees in a sidereal day along 12 meridians, the number of zodiacs, which are named after the hour angle of the sun, Taiyang, Yang, Ming, etc. These are terms that describe the hour angle in which five points are named, water, wood, etc. And these are the names of the five planets. Now, anyone that is not willfully ignorant, like most advocates of traditional acupuncture in the U.S., will immediately see that it was modeled after astrology and sun mythology and according to an episteme of as above, so below. So, 
Chinese acupuncture can accurately be described as astrology with needles. Whoa. Beware, beware. Thank you so much, Dr. Yvonne, for sharing your journey and for sharing the dangers of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine. And we thank you for joining us at home as well. We want to encourage you to study the Word of God and study these materials that have been shared. God bless you and keep you.